Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome to the course on uh, medical biomaterials we will continue on this uh, topic of metals um, in the previous class uh, i was talking about uh, crystal structure okay uh, different type classes of crystals and um, the brevis lattices and uh, before that i talked about miller index and how to uh, calculate a miller index of a plane okay so i did mention there are um, seven crystal classes cubic tetragonal orthorhombic hexagonal monoclinic triclinic and trigonal and uh, in each of the class you can have a primitive structure you can have a body centered cubic face centered cubic or side centered uh, so there are 14 brevis lattices okay all the metals even uh, salts for example uh, fall um, will fall into this they have if they have if they are crystalline in nature okay so crystallinity uh, determines some of their physical chemical properties um, if you are interested in preparing metal alloys um, what type of metal to add to uh, existing metal to change its properties uh, if we know in which crystal class it will fall and what based on the dimension of the uh, the element uh, we can de decide what type of new crystal class it will fall into so um, understanding the crystal structure is very very important we have uh, a, a powder x-ray crystallography um, which can help us to find out the crystal structure of uh, various uh, uh, materials organic molecules inorganic molecules and so on okay so trying to understand uh, this is very important like i said uh, it determines the physical chemical properties these crystal uh, structures can change as a function of time okay it can change depending upon the presence of impurities and so on okay uh, so if you take for example sodium chloride okay sodium chloride forms a nice crystal so like i said uh, it's this is the unit cell that's the repeating unit keeps on happening okay so we can have this like a chlorine atom this is a sodium atom so NaCl so for every sodium there will be a chlorine so they are nicely beautifully packed like this because their uh, uh, valency is also one one so they all nicely packed alternatingly alternatingly okay so if you take one uh, unit cell uh, as you can see okay there are some sodiums present uh, but not the whole as you can see this particular so, um, sodium uh, is available for this unit cell this unit cell this unit cell this unit cell and again four on top so basically uh, this is only okay one two three four eight okay so only one eighth is available for this particular unit cell you understand similarly same thing goes uh, for your chlorine also okay um, so one interesting thing is the anisotropy of crystals for example uh, let us take uh, this uh, particular uh, crystal okay what is this particular crystal so it is got uh, uh, in the corners 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and also it is got 1 2 3 4 5 6 in their faces okay so that is called face centered cubic now depending upon the direction um the atoms number of atoms can change what does that mean okay what does that mean young's modulus of this is a copper okay it forms a face centered cubic um suppose the direction is like this so these type of atoms are going to be that means direction of the force or load is in this direction these atoms are um undergoing that particular force or tensile strength or tensile force or compressive force then the Young's modulus is 66.7 giga Pascal okay now if it is the force is in this direction as you can see not only these two 
corner atoms, but also this particular atom is also uh, part of this uh, pull. So, the Young's modulus increases to 130 gigapascal. See, if it is in this direction, it is 66.7, if it is in this direction, it is 130.3, that is a big difference. Whereas, if it is in the another direction like this, okay, it goes to 191, that is the longer diagonal, it is 191.1 gigapascal, okay, lot of difference. So, if it is along the side uh, or if it is along the face or if it is along the longer uh, diagonal, okay. So, the Young's modulus can change dramatically, okay. So, if the uh, direction of the force for the tension um, um, and the way the crystal is oriented uh, of copper for example, uh, we may have to consider different types of uh, numbers for the Young's modulus. Okay. So, uh, if we think, uh, uh, calculate everything based on this, whereas uh, if it is oriented in this, then uh, we are in big trouble because the Young's modulus comes down by almost a factor of 3, okay, which is a big change. Okay. So, that is very, very important. Look at this. So, suppose uh, if the plane is like this. Okay, or it is like this, the number of uh, atoms of uh, the particular material or metal uh, uh, that is uh, in contact is changing dramatically. If it is like this, only the corner atoms face the particular load, whereas if it is like this, it is not only corner, also the atoms on the um, faces also face it. So, there is going to be a lot of difference in their uh, yield strength or uh, the uh, Young's modulus. Okay. So, you need to keep that in mind. So, different crystallographic planes have different atomic density or the number of atoms in that uh, particular unit cell will be going to be different. So, obviously, hence different properties, okay. the properties can dramatically change. Okay. So, you need to keep that point in mind. Okay. Silicon, for example, okay. This is an example of a silicon wafer. So, when they undergo load, um, if it is along this plane, um, as against along the longer diagonal, the Young's modulus are going to be very different, and that is called the anisotropy of crystals. Okay, and um, that is another point. The other point is. Uh, whether the crystal unit cell is a BCC or FCC or HCP or uh, primitive, that also determines its mechanical properties. For example, BCCs are ductile, plastic, so it is more workable. FCC, ductile, plastic, but uh, okay, little bit workable. But if you take a hexagonal, it lacks plasticity, so uh, it is not possible for you to work on that. So, ideally uh, a BCC it is very, very ductile and plastic, so we can nicely work on it and get in nice uh, shapes of different shapes, okay. whereas FCC is slightly more difficult and HCP it is practically impossible to work on it. Okay. So, let us go back, uh, take an iron, it has got a BCC structure, okay. so each of these corners okay, and one uh, in the middle here. So, it has a BCC structure at room temperature with an atomic radius of 1.24 angstroms. Calculate its density. Its atomic weight is 55.85 gram per mole. So, if you take one unit cell, we need to know how many atoms are there. Can you tell how many atoms are there? So, this atom which inside the body center is fully available for the unit cell, whereas these corner atoms are not available because it is shared by 8 unit cells. Okay, okay. So obviously, uh, only um, if there are, although there are eight atoms, each one is shared by eight. So it's eight divided by eight. So there will be only one. So there will be two atoms available for one unit cell. Okay, okay. Let's look at it more in detail. Um, so this is the central atom. Um, so it's got a radius of two r. If you take the long diagonal. Let us take the long diagonal. This is the central atom, 
okay. And then these are the corner atoms, so we have R, R. So the long diagonal uh, will be equal to 4 R. And suppose A is the side of the cube, okay, and the long diagonal is 4 R, where R is the radius of uh, each of these atoms, okay. And uh, like you, you must have studied in your school, the long diagonal is square root of 3 into side, just like uh, in a square, the diagonal is square root of 2 into side. Um, for a cube, long diagonal is square root of 3 into side. So, you must have studied this, right? So, side is A. So, obviously, 4 R is equal to square root of 3 A. So, there is a relation we can develop between R and A, okay? So, 4 R is equal to 4 R, the R plus R, 2 R plus R, that is 4 R is equal to square root of uh, 3 A. So, A is equal to 4 R divided by square root of 3. Now, volume of 1 unit cell, volume of 1 unit cell, okay, is equal to 4 into R is 1.24 angstrom, so we convert it into centimeter 10 power minus 8 um, cube, A into A into A is the volume and uh, that is so many, that is this, okay, because R is given here. 1.24, 4 into 1.24 into 10 power minus 8 whole thing q raised to the power 3. So, this is volume of one cell. Okay, now, we need to know the um, mass. Now, number of atoms, like I said, uh, one central atom uh, plus 1 by 8 of 8 corners, so 2. Uh, Avogadro number is 6.023 into 10 power 23 atoms per gram mole. So, 2 atoms you have on the atomic weight is given as 55.85 gram per mole. So, 55.85 uh, gram per mole, okay. Then you have the 6.023 and atoms are there per gram mole. So, we need to divide that. We understand 2 atoms per unit cell multiply by 55.85 gram, but um, in 1 gram mole there are 6.023 10 power 23. So, we need to divide that. So, the weight is 1.85 into 10 power minus 22. So, density is weight by volume. So, 1.85 into 10 power uh, minus 22 and volume is 2.34 10 power minus 23 divide. So, we will end up with 7.89 grams per cc and this sort of matches um, with the literature value also. So, um, what do we do? We know how many atoms will be there in one unit cell. Okay, 2 and then multiply by the weight of each one of them at, that is atomic weight 55. We need to divide by Avogadro number because it tells you how many atoms per gram mole. Now, if you go, want to go look at the volume, uh, use geometry here. Um, if you take the long diagonal, there is one central atom and then two atoms uh, um, placed on the corners. So, that central diagonal will be 2 r plus r plus r 4 r. And um, in our school, we must have studied for a cube, the long diagonal is square root of 3 into side, that is A. So, um, 4 R is equal to square root of 3 A. So, the volume of one cell is A into A into A, which is 4 R divided by square root of 3 raised to the power 3. And then, of course, we need to convert angstrom into centimeter. So, that is why we have this 10 power minus 8. So, we end up with 7.89 grams per cc, okay, quite uh, straightforward. Okay. Now, uh, there is some other term which is called the coordination number, that is the total number of neighbors of a central atom in a molecule or ion. So, obviously, say, suppose you take this chap, there are uh, three atoms okay, in a triangular coordination number is 3. Suppose this is a tetragon, so there is one like uh, your sp3 type, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the center, so we have 4 tetragon. So, if you have like this, hexagonal okay and that's 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 if you take a cube 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 bcc this is 8 if you take a um, uh, fcc so apart from uh, okay there are 12 8 okay so there are 12 for this that's the called the coordination number that is number of atoms um, which are neighbors to this central atom, this is the black one. So, coordination number for BCC uh, is 8, like I showed you here, okay. 
Um, in diamond, for example, each carbon atom is at the center of a regular tetrahedron. So, coordination number is 4. So, we have uh, diamond like here, diamond like structure here. Uh, so, 4. Graphite is a two dimensional structure, okay. So, graphite, so the coordination number will be 3. So, we will be having layers and layers of graphite, uh, whereas diamond uh, will be a three dimensional uh, like this, a tetrahedron. So, coordination number is 4. Uh, graphite, so same carbons, but you can see that uh, coordination number changes depending upon their structural. And um, graphite is made up of two dimension, diamond is made up of three dimensional regular tetrahedron, okay. So, car, uh, coordination number for graphite is 3, coordination number diamond for 4. Alpha aluminum has a regular cubic closed packed structure FCC, okay, sorry, alpha FCC. Uh, so, the coordination number is 12. So, coordination number for BCC is 8, um, yeah, coordination number diamond like I said, I said it regular tetrahedron, so it is 4, graphite is got layer by layer, two dimension layer, so see coordination number is 3, okay. Now, there is a slight difference in coordination number depending upon whether it is a bulk coordination number of a given atom, um, that is the total or it is a surface coordination number, that is surface means uh, on the surface like of uh, say cube. So, generally surface coordination number will be less than the bulk coordination number. So, when we say surface, we look at the surface atoms and see uh, for a central atom what are the nearest neighbors. Whereas, when we say bulk coordination number, we look at the central atom in a bulk three dimension and see what are the atoms that are surrounding it, okay. So, if you take BCC, bulk coordination number is 8, okay. Whereas, if you take the surface coordination of that uh, for the 1 0 0 plane, that will be 4, okay. Because uh, look at this, there are 4 atoms. This uh, one which is in the middle does not come into the picture, okay. So, for a BCC, um, the bulk coordination number is 8, surface coordination for the 1 0 0 surface um, is 4. So, understand 1 0 0, that means the in the y and z axis, it is not cutting. Uh, only the x is cutting. So, it is uh, it's cutting x, but it is parallel to y and z axis, okay. So, if you have x, y, z, so it is parallel to the y and z. So, this particular plane could be 1, 0, 0. It is cutting the x axis, but it is not cutting the y and z axis, okay. Um, crystallographic defects. Crystals, as we said, for forms uniform, um, but there are always uh, chances of defects because as the crystal keeps forming and forming, um, mixing takes place and the atoms come closer to each other and this, the, the crystal starts growing. So, there could be defects. There are something called point defect, plane defect and so on actually. So, what is this point defect? That is it happens at one single lattice point, okay. So, these are called vacancy defect. Instead of having one atom there, there is no atom, there is a gap. So, that is called vacancy defect. Of course, when you have like this, the structural strength goes down. Interstitial defect, that means atoms are occupying, uh, instead of being regular in their place where they have to be, they are in some odd place, where it should not be there. That is called the interstitial defect, okay. So, point defect, you can also have impurities there, okay. There is an uh, impurity atom because um, crystals, although they are supposed to be extremely pure with the 100 percent purity, sometimes only impurity like carbon can go and sit there, okay. So, the radius could be substantially smaller of that impurity or almost the same, uh, okay. Then there is something called anti-side defect. Suppose you have an ordered alloy of two different atoms. So, they are placed like this, okay, one after another, one after another like this. But in there is a rearrangement, okay. Look at this, look at this. So, instead of this being there and this being there, that is uh, atom 1 and atom 2, uh, they get interchanged. This is called anti site defects. Line defects, they are called dislocations. That means some of the atoms are misaligned. Instead of the, suppose they are to be uniformly in a straight line, um, they are misaligned. So, they are called Misalignment can be um, 
in a linear fashion or there could be a it could be in a curved fashion. Linear fashion we call it edge dislocation that is termination of a plane of atoms in the middle of the crystal or screw dislocation that means helical path is traced around the linear defect. So, instead of being a line it could be a yeah, uh, twisted so we call it screw defect screw dislocation that is called a line defect. Planar defect grain boundaries occur where the crystallographic direction of the lattice abruptly changes that is called the planar defect instead of line the entire plane is uh, defective ok. Now, look at this. So, so in, in metals uh, you can have individual crystals like this. So, they are all forming forming forming. So, but then there could be another crystals all forming forming and each crystal is growing growing and then finally, they end up like this. These are called grain boundaries. So, this particular crystal is grown, this particular crystal has grown, they all grow from different directions and they all hit and this is called the grain boundary. So, these grain boundaries um, are little bit weak and there is a lot of uh, mechanical engineering studies talked about. So, we will not go into this, but if you take a crystal um, and look under a very um, high resolution microscope, we can see these grain boundaries ok, where defects uh, where uh, in, um, the strength could be much lesser, there could be movement and so on actually. Because as the crystal starts growing in from different directions, um, the inside the crystal they may be uniform, but as they hit another growing crystal, another growing crystal, another growing crystal, they form this type of grain boundaries ok. These are, the, uh, these are individual crystals, the whole thing is a grain and uh, each grain hits each other during their growth. Um, and they form the grain boundary. Now, this is called the edge dislocation where as you can see here there is a uh, shift in the edges ok. Then you have the bulk defects these are all three dimensional macroscopic defects such as pores there could be small small holes, there could be cracks, there could be some inclusion bodies, voids where there are no atoms ok, cluster of vacancies ok. Impurities can cluster together, there could be some impurities, they all come may come together. Uh, so, there could be patches of impurities. So, all these are also possible in a crystalline system, ok. So, impurities you can have, uh, they can be filling up these voids as, and um, if they are smaller or just equal, ok, then uh, they are ok, but if they are very, very big, uh, they may completely uh, dislocate the equilibrium position can be shifted away from the relative side. So, the impurities can be small like this or just equal touching each other, touching all the other atoms whereas, when it, they become very big they are going to completely disrupt the crystal structure ok. So, if uh, let us look at this um, suppose we have a, um, a small atom for a coordination number 4 sorry 6. So, we have 4 atoms here of uh, radius capital R and 2 1 on the top 1 on the bottom. So, we have this small r uh, which just touches all of these 4 as well as 1 at the top and 1 at the bottom. Um, we can get some relationship between these small r and the capital R ok. These are all from geometry. Uh, so, if I draw this radius that is r plus r and if I draw a perpendicular line to the capital R this angle is 45 degrees right. So, cos 45 as all of us know is 1 by square root of 2 which is equal to this small r divided by r plus r. This from our geometry we must have studied in our 10th standard ok. So, cos 45 which is 1 by square root of 2 uh, r divided by r plus r. So, if I rearrange this uh, square root of 2 r is equal to r plus r. Uh, then I divide by capital R, I will end up with R by R is equal to square root of 2 minus 1, square root of 2 is 1.414 minus 1 is 0.414. So, ratio of the radius this small r by capital R is 0.414. That means, I can fit exactly a um, smaller circle or a smaller ok, which uh, will have a radius 
uh, equal to 0.414 of the bigger radius. Okay. If I have smaller, then of course, the smaller circle will not touch all of them. If I have a bigger, it is going to dislocate or shift all of these uh, things. Okay. So, you have to keep that in mind. Similarly, um, if we want to look at 3, okay, where this is touching 3 of them, again it goes through your geometry. Okay, so, how do we go do that? First, we draw a big circle uh, which will uh, 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 cover all these two, three small circles. Okay, so, we have the big circle which will cover and then um, what will be the length of this uh, particular perpendicular? Again, it comes from your geometry because this is an equilateral triangle. Uh, this radius is R, this radius is capital R. R capital R capital R capital R capital R. Okay, so the length. This is called the median. The length of the median of this triangle. Suppose this equilateral triangle is R plus R. That is two. Length of the median of the triangle is square root of three divided by two into a. Again, you have studied in your school. Square median um, of an equilateral triangle square root of three by two into the side. Side is two because this is one. This is one. So, that will give the square root of 3 that is this median. Uh, the radius of this bigger circle is equal to okay, radius of the bigger circle is equal to this length plus this length. Okay. This length is 1. Now, what is this length? 66 percent or 2 thirds of this median, 2 thirds of square root of 3 plus this 1. Do you understand? So, um, what is the radius of this bigger circle? It is made up of this length plus this radius. This radius we will call it 1. Now, this radius that is the two third of the median of this triangle. Um, okay, median is square root of 3. So, 2 by 3 into square root of 3. Now, once I know the radius of bigger circle, radius of this smaller circle is radius of bigger circle, okay, radius of bigger circle uh, minus this that will give you the radius of this. So, radius of bigger circle minus this is 1 plus 1, 2 that is the diameter of the this circle. So, radius of bigger circle is given by 2 by 3 into square root of 3 minus 1. Okay. So, because this plus 1 and this minus 2 goes to minus 1. So, it is 0.155. So, the radius of the small circle which is touching all these um, divided by the radius of this bigger circle uh, will have ratio of 0.155. So, this this is obtained of course, from uh, geometry. Uh, okay, so, it is not very difficult. So, um, I can have a small circle um, which can be placed inside uh, which touches all these bigger circle and that size of that circle will be uh, related with the uh, size of the bigger circle by r by r is equal to 0.55. Whereas, uh, in this particular situation we saw uh, r by r is equal to 0.414 and so on. So, we can do a lot of these type of calculations. Okay. Uh, so, for coordination number 3, um, r by r that is radius of black to white 0.155, uh, coordination number 4 that is the tetrahedron radius of r by r 0.225, coordination number 6 um, 0.414 that is HCP coordination number 8 r by r is 0 0.732, coordination number 12 r by r is 1. So, um, this tells you the central atom radius as against the bigger atom radius. Um, this is the number it should be. If it is bigger, it is going to dis disrupt the, uh, the lattice. Okay. That is, uh, so based on these numbers, one can even think about uh, what type of uh, um, impurities to add to the existing uh, um, metal. Okay. There is something also called the atomic packing factor. Okay. So, we will talk about this atomic packing factor in the next class. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.